Hey, 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 everybody, how's it going? It's the Otter Samurai here, back with another mo more adventures with Danganronpa. So, last episode, we saw some manly bonds happen between two dumb little idiots, and we had to say goodbye to the precious ultimate programmer, Chihiro. So we're gonna solve this murder. Da -da 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 -da! Gang, gang, gang! If only I discovered evidence to reveal the identity of the culprit. I feel as if... <laughs> Another stabbing piece for me. Evidence, what'd you find? Mm -hmm. I cannot reveal that just yet. That's it. I'm sure of it. But I guarantee that what I found will steal the killer's breath from his lungs. Are you sure about that? Mm -hmm. Oh yeah, Miss Unberg mm -hmm. said you would be something worthwhile as you. Really? What'd she say? Well, you feel to tell me. It's like when a girl bullies your boy she likes, right? Right! Okay, so where's Celeste now? Hmm. Where are you, Magic Dwarf? She was there, but at the same time, not there. What's it gonna be? Jesus. And we're back here. There's a big blood stain on the dumbbell on the floor. Monokuma Files said the fatal injury was caused by a blow to the head. This dumbbell has to be the murder weapon. The blood stain on the carpet could only be a cause for Chihiro's murder. Damn. Chihiro's presence here was especially weak. Her body and her soul. No forgiveness! To target such a helpless being, it's unforgivable. What a wretched beast to do such a thing. I... I cannot forgive this. Alright. I don't think there's any new information here. Hey, Kyokyo, I've made any progress on your investigation? Indeed. Generally speaking. However... But I have to get going. I have something unrelated to take care of. Something besides the investigation? What is it? Well... Nothing you need to worry about. Just concentrate on the murder. But... But... So then... <coughs> Before I go, let me give you one piece of advice. Man, Sakura's voice is killing me. You should examine Chihiro's body one more time, and thoroughly. Also, her handbook is missing. You might want to determine its whereabouts. Goodbye. That's it. I'll be praying for your success. With that, Kyoko turned and left the girls' locker room. Guess I'll take another look at the body then. And Chihiro's handbook is missing? Definitely worth worrying about. The big-breasted swimsuit model is pretty noticeable, too. A girls' locker room doesn't seem like this kind of place you find something like this. Kyoko said I should examine the body one more time. I know she said thoroughly, but I do have my limits. Well, I better give it a shot anyway. Let's see... Chihiro's hands are bound with what looks like some kind of rope. The rope was used to prop her up in a kind of crucifix position. <laughs> huh? This rope has a plug? Wait, so then this isn't a rope at all. It's the... But more I think about it, the more that's not the only thing that concerns me. Chihiro's fatal injury was a blow to the head. Which means that someone struck her in the head in order to kill her. That's right. There's the issue of her being uh, suspended and the fatal blow. First, I didn't see any reason to think too much about either of them. But seeing them against that again after looking through the Genocide Jack file, something's not quite right. What does this all mean? Well, the one thing that most likely to tie all these things mysteries together is the true nature of the rope that was used to suspend Chihiro. Figure that out, there's a certain place I need to revisit and look over again. Plus, it might help to look at the Genocide Jack case file one more time. Dude had a real point. Yeah. Blah, blah. Yeah. Alright. Yeah, we're done with this little area. I think we need to examine the boys' locker room. Maybe there's some kind of clue over there. Oh, well, this is different. Huh? This poster? It's a popular boy band called Tornado. Somehow it doesn't quite seem to fit in the boys' locker room. We're all gay. We're all gay for Tornado. Especially Green Hair Boy. He's cute. cute. Oh, wait, that reminds me. The poster in the other locker room is... That's right. There's definitely something stranger about this. In the boys' locker room, there's a poster of a popular boy band. 
In the girls' locker room, there's a poster of a big-breasted swimsuit model. Could the posters have been switched? But if they were, why? What reason would anyone have? Maybe we should talk to someone who knows a little more about the locker room. There's a strange stain on the carpet. What is it? It's shit! Wait, Sakura, do you know what about this shit stain? Hey, Sakura, what's the stain? You spend a lot of time exercising in the girls' locker room, right, Sakura? Of course. I've used it nearly every day since it opened up. Sometimes he and I use it together. Okay, then let me ask you something. Do you think the posters of the boys in the girls' locker rooms could have been switched? I'm sorry. Sorry, I can't really say. I never really paid any attention to the posters. I see. However... But there is something that's been bothering me about the locker room. You see, I like to drink a little protein coffee every time I finish exercising. We have protein coffee? Mmm. In the warehouse. It's not the highest quality, but I don't have a lot of other options. I'm like Celeste, I need top quality shit. I mix protein powder with coffee and down a glass of it after exercising. Anyway, the other day I spilled some on the carpet in the girls' locker room, and it left a stain. It looked like shit. A stain? I don't see any stain on the carpet now. You know, except for the blood. Of course. Exactly. I noticed it earlier. The stain had disappeared. With a new stain covering it. Blood. I can only assume someone came along and cleaned it up. But still, is it uh, usually clean? As if there was never a stain here to begin with? Huh. Well, well, well. Welly, welly, well, well, well. Maybe the murder didn't even take place in the girls' locker room. That's weird. Wait, 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 wait. Library, right. There's a thick layer of dust on top of the desk. Some kind of clue here. Guess not. But I got coins! Nice! <clears throat> One box is empty. The extension core was in there before. I want to take another look at the Genocide Jack's case file. I know it's around here somewhere. Huh? It's gone! Someone take it out of the archive? But the only one who would do something like that. I can't think of anyone but. Oh, that was pointless. I guess we'll go see Celeste. Shelf packed tight with books for looking. La la la, da 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 da. Oh shit, damn it, I hate when I do that. Alright, whatever. Huh? The lamp won't turn on. Oh, I see. It's not plugged in. Oh, it's the smart. Lamp's cord isn't long enough to reach the outlet from here. Last time I saw it, was definitely on. It was definitely right here. Oh, I'm sorry. Piakio is an using an extension cord. But there's no extension cord here now. I wonder if... Okay, cool. Bakaka! Biakakaka! Where you at? Alright, so the warehouse should be over here. Let's talk to Celestia. Celeste, what are you doing here? <laughs> this warehouse is amazing. It has absolutely everything one might need to live a full life. From food to clothes to towels, there is an endless supply to choose from. I see that, but have you found anything related to the case? Most unfortunate. I knew you were going to ask me that. I thought talking about the warehouse and thought might distract you, but I feel it's pointless. Then you did find something. <laughs> Very well, I will tell you, and only you. Actually... Last night I saw her here. Chihiro was in the warehouse. What? Really? Indeed. This is right before nighttime. Hmm? 
What are you doing out this late? Oh, um, I was just... Are you planning to go exercise, perhaps? What? How did you know? <laughs> because I can see a blue track jacket sticking out of that duffel bag you're carrying. Oh, well, look at that. Oh, you're right. Thanks. Let me well, just hide it real quick. I'd better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. <sighs> she stuffed the jacket into her bag in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was gone. Yes, indeed. I assume she was merely stocking up to go exercise in the morning, but... It would appear she had thought the nighttime rule and headed directly to the girl's locker room. If she hadn't broken her rule, none of this ever would have happened. <laughs> you get what you deserve, I suppose. So apparently, she went to the girl's locker room late at night in order to exercise without anyone knowing. But the strange thing is, there was no trace of the jacket or duffel bag Celeste saw which she saw to hero Karen. Which would mean the killer would have gotten rid of it somehow. <laughs> Alright, ooh, what other clues do I need? Maybe I need to find Bakaka! Bakaka! Where you at? Nope. Nope. Where's my kaka? -ka -ka? What if uh, Hina has anything for me? <sighs> Hina. Oh, Hina, how's Toko doing? Hmm. Same as before, she will come out and she just keeps on mumbling something about Genocide Jack. <laughs> so I just left her there. You, you left her? My house all swimming, I was getting pretty, getting pretty hungry. Yeah! Oh, but don't worry, I'm gonna head back as soon as I'm done eating. Toko's not exactly pleasant, but I'm still worried about her. Speaking of which, what are you? <laughs> Donuts, of course! Uh, of course. <sighs> There's two things I'm sure God created outer space and donuts. Really? Mm. I bet you Hero would have liked to eat more donuts. Maybe that was her one big regret. Aww. Oh, I should try to spend more time with her. Come to think of it, who did she spend time with? Well... Yeah, she was a little bit strange. Didn't really hang out with the other girls much. It was like... Like she was trying to keep her distance from us. <laughs> Actually, Sakura said something similar. She said that even though you and her invited Chihiro to exercise with you, she always refused. Yeah, totally! Yep, it's true. And it wasn't just us, either. It was like she stayed away from all the girls. Was she just shy? Mm. I don't know. She talked to the boys all the time. Isn't it kind of weird to be shy around your own sex, but totally fine with the opposite sex? Ah. Oh wait, maybe she's not a lesbian. Maybe she was used to guys spoiling her. Lost says he can't judge a book by its cover, right? You think so? I never really saw her as that kind of girl. Oh shit, that's it. Yep, he and I had the last clue for us. Um, so, uh, I'm getting tired of waiting. Shall we just plunge right in? Shut up, stupid it's bear. It's the moment you've all been waiting for. The class trial. You remember where to meet, right? Please go through the red door on the first floor of the school. Okay. <laughs> See you soon. You dingbat. Begin the class trial, or it's about to begin. The red door is right through here. Tensing up, man. Tensing up. Alright, let's see if we can try to get everybody spoken this time. Ahem. So, is everyone ready to... What? Hmm? Am I blind, or are we missing someone? Yo. Yeah, Toko's not here. Huh? And Toko is... You really did remember? Come on! Kidding! I'm just kidding. How can I forget that little nut job? He's a crucial part of the class trial this time. What are you gonna do? Okie dokie, I'll go ahead and drag her out here kicking and screaming. Just one moment, please. <laughs> Alright, guys, I gotta... Here we go. And just like he said, a few minutes later, he reappeared, dragging Toko behind him. <laughs> I told him I didn't want to, but he forced me. 
I can't believe you're dragging girl around. Yeah. Terrible! You're t terrible! Phew! Oh, so now everyone's here, right? Okay then, hustle on to the elevator. Let's get this show on the road! <laughs> I'll see you guys down there. Let's go. So, shall we get going? It's time to find out who killed Chihiro. Chihiro. Chihiro Fujisaki. She was so gentle, so calm and neat. Nobody had any problems with her. Someone made the choice to kill a, a girl like that. And that murderer is one of us. Someone's standing right here. It was you, sucker, wasn't well, it? Then, I will uncover the villain who performs such a heinous act on a weaker individual. What about you, bushy hmm. brow hair? Are you ready? We do this? Hmm. I don't know why the killer did what they did, but Count on I'm sure it'll work itself out. Justice always reveals, right, bro? Shall we go? Shall we begin? How very sad. Jackie, I'm a it for being 3D. She was quite remarkable. Of course, just the idea of 3D makes me cringe. You're pretty cool, Tori. Hmm. There is something else about Tuckle's behavior. I do not think Mira Shock is enough to explain it. <laughs> I gave you plenty to work with. Show us how far your logic can take you. <laughs> I guess I wasn't much help out of all of this one. <laughs> hey, come on! Fucking Toko, man. What's got her so worked up? Yeah! Yeah! Oh shit. That'd be funny to like shoot these guys and like coin coming out like <laughs> We have no choice, right? We have to do it's this. It's true. Yes. I gave a small nod in reply. With one last deep breath, I walk towards the elevator and shaky legs. With each step forward, I can feel my heart starting to race faster and faster. As soon as everyone was on, the elevator began to descend. I couldn't get a handle on my emotions. Couldn't stop speculating. The steel box sank with heavy clunking sounds deeper and deeper into the ground. And as we went deeper, the uneasiness of my heart grew bigger and bigger. The elevator was unaffected, however, and continued to descend without hesitation. Until finally, it came to a sudden stop. <laughs> what do you think? I'm redecorated! Isn't it so fresh? Isn't it so exciting? Hmm. Don't waste our time with stupid questions. Let's get this over with. Very good, good. You're rip raring to go. Gotta say, I don't hate it. Not at all. Well? Okay then, let's get this show on the road. Thrills, chills, kills! Everyone, please find your assigned seats. And so the curtain opened once again. A deadly judgment, a deadly decession, a deadly betrayal, a deadly riddle, a deadly defense, a deadly fate, a deadly class trial. Here we go, boys and girls, it's time for another class trial. Okay, I only have two skills. All rise. Let's begin if no. you and I okay then. So, first off, let's talk about the murder weapon. You sound happy about it. First, we have to make clear what was used to deliver the fatal blow. Okay. Chihiro's fatal injury. It appears it was a head wound. According to the Monokuma file, the killer used a blunt instrument. But what kind of blunt instrument could it have been? A tuba! I bet it was an iron pipe. No, you stupid idiot. No, it's wrong. Can we agree that the object that dealt the fatal blow was the dumbbell found at the scene of the crime? So he used Hero to kill him. Got he it. He was covered in blood. And there was nothing else at the scene that could have caused that kind of injury. And the wound on the victim's head is consistent with the shape of the dumbbell. As yep. far as I'm concerned, there's no mistake and no room for doubt on this one. You looked at her head wound? Well, yeah. Yes! That's so creepy! I'm gonna vomit out my walrus mouth! If you don't mind, I will proceed from here. 
Let's move on to discussion of the culprit. Although, I believe the criminal behind this heinous act is already quite clear. What? Oh, for real? Chihiro's killer is the fiendish serial killer, Genocide Jack. What? Genocide Jack? The fiendish serial killer? The killer of Lucky Charms and Honey Nut Cheerios? Did he really kill Chihiro? New element's been added non-stop debate. No, I don't want to hear any of that. The culprit is Genocide Jack. I'm sure of it. Case closed, as far as I'm concerned. But that's impossible! Why? What makes it impossible? Because he got purple well, words I mean, all over the place. Come on! There's just no proof for it. No, that's wrong! No, that's wrong! I might know one reason he could be involved. What? I found this file while I was looking around the archive in the library. I guess it's some kind of confidential file the police put together about the Genocide Jack case. What? That's kind of weird as shit, isn't it? What was something like that doing in the library? The why of it is probably more trouble than it's worth. So let's forget about that for now. Because the school's part of the Illuminati! More importantly, it outlines all the specifics of every Genocide Jack case in exceeding detail. According to the file, there appear to be two defining characteristics in every Genocide Jack case. The first is that a bloody message is found written at the scene of every murder. Oh, that's right. Boob lust. No, you stupid walrus. Ah, uh, no. It's actually blood lust. <laughs> but more important is the other characteristic. <coughs> and it's something that has never been made public. Never made public? What the hell is it? Why don't you tell them, Makoto? Tell them, Nyagi. The other characteristic of every Genocide Jack case, which the world at large doesn't know, if I'm not mistaken, has to do with the positioning of the body. How they're done! Apparently, in every Genocide Jack case, the killer suspends the body in a certain way. Other than the killer, the only people who know about this are the higher-ups in the police department. Right? However, Chihiro was most definitely suspended in the same way. Uh, I kind of disagree there. So, how did the culprit know about this when only high-level police officials were aware of it? There's only one logical answer I can think of. Hmm. It's because the culprit in this case is the real Genocide Jack. No what? fucking way! You're saying Genocide Jack is one of us? Yes. In fact, it's Toko. Wait, shit, what? What? Genocide Jack's true identity is Toko Fukawa. You lie! Yeah! Th now I feel like gonna die right now. What? Hey, okay, wait, hold on a sec. Toko has, like, bloodophobia or whatever, remember? Hemophilia, What kind know? of serial killer is afraid of blood? Is Toko Genocide Jack? The answer is yes and no. Another riddle. Man, why is this got to be so complicated? Because you're an idiot, hero. It's a riddle for sure, but I feel like I understand it. What it means for Genocide Jack to be Toko, but also to not be Toko? The answer is that she's not just one person, but multiple people, right? Associative disorder or whatever. Fuck, I forgot what it's called. Otherwise, a schizophrenic. Schizo! Now I understand! Is it because Genocide Jack has a split personality? Bingo! Uh, I think I read that somewhere in the file, too. They thought that the suspect might have... What did they call it? Dissociative Identity Disorder. Oh, okay. But still, to go and say that about Ms. Fukawa is... Perfectly Correct. acceptable. Toko's strange behavior after seeing the body is proof enough that she has a split personality. One thing that shows Toko could have a split personality has to do with her behavior. I got it! You're talking about how she started acting totally different than usual, right? That's right. 
think back. She fainted when she saw Chihiro's corpse, and then, when she woke up... I'm fine, I'm fine! <laughs> Whoa, is that a dead body? Hey, are you dead? <laughs> she must have hit her head real hard when she fainted. The world has a front and a back, a top and an and a bottom. I see a truth in a brother life. This is quite silly. I mean, she sounds completely different. She was acting funny, that's for sure. That melancholy tone of hers completely disappeared. Don't go assigning adjectives to my tone without permission. Not to mention, once <laughs> she regained consciousness and saw Chihiro's body again, she was utterly calm. In other words, within her is one personality that can handle blood, and one that obviously can. <laughs> so when Toko trapped herself in her room, it's because she was scared of Genocide Jack? Uh-huh. I won't, won't let Genocide Jack have control. I'll just drive out the killer. Just drive out the murderer scene. The reason she locked herself in her room wasn't to keep other people from getting in. It was to keep her <coughs> other personality from getting out. What? What? Wait, what? Toko was afraid. Afraid of the murderous fiend inside of her. Of killing even more people. Uh, how? Yeah. How can you know all this? I do believe you misunderstood her. What she's trying to say isn't, how can you know all this? No. What she wants to know is, how could you tell them? Huh? Last night, just before Monokuma gave his motive speech, Toko and I had a strange conversation. She huh. told me a most interesting story. She said, a murderous fiend lived within her, and she was afraid it could appear and attack at any time. And that trepidation is what's caused her to have such a bleak attitude. Isn't that right, Toko? <laughs> Damn you! This is all a lie! Damn you, my love! Right, Toko? You said you wouldn't tell anyone. What? You promised! I can't believe you lied! You have only yourself to blame. You came to me with your tragic little story. I didn't ask you to. This yep. is the real world, not some romantic fantasy fairy tale. <laughs> Besides, you broke your promise first. You said that as long as you were here, no matter what, you wouldn't let Genocide Jack kill anyone. But in spite of that promise... So many people are dead. Uh, I'm sorry. I couldn't keep our promise. But don't worry. Never again. I... I won't let Genocide Jack have control ever again. You said if I kept my promise, you would go out with me. That's the only reason I promised. How many times do I have to tell you? <laughs> I never said that. But you weren't able to do it. You just couldn't resist that rush you got from killing, could you? I, I tried. I swear I tried to control it. <laughs> but your efforts were useless. What a disappointment. Yeah, Bianca. I hate you. Well, the opening act is nearly finished. All that's left is to hear from the person in question directly. The person y you don't mean summon him summon genocide jack toko's body suddenly lunged backwards a huge thud echoed across the courtroom but in the next second da -da 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 -da! <laughs> well, hello there is it me you were hoping to see is that loud or richie reference yes, you, what the heck <laughs> What are you gonna do? I'm the ultimate murderous fiend, Genocide Jack! Or better yet, let's go with Genocide Jill! What the <laughs> fuck is this? Toko, what happened to you? Not Toko, that's a loser name. And what happened is a textbook split personality. So yep. what if one of them happens to be a serial killer? You should turn a blind eye to one's fault. <laughs> I love Genocide Jill. She's one of my favorites. Like they say, sound and 
murderous mind, sound, and murderous body. This one is so different from the one we've come to know. Yes, well, the world is composed of a front and a back, you know. Just like how every inning has a top and a bottom, or how in the depths I'm a of every I'm truth a... lives a lip. Behind every dark and gloomy soul lives another that shines as bright as the sun! <laughs> I love her laugh, it's so wild. This is the murderous fiend? Genocide Jack? This is... This is... This is beyond insane! Um, Miss Jack, uh, uh, Jill, can I ask you a question? What's up? I love how it is that she is like, yeah, what's Some up? Some of us think you might be the mastermind behind our entire situation. What are your thoughts on that? Well, I'll tell you! I am the mastermind of all masterminds! Just kidding! Then... it's not true? Of course it's not true! How dare you try to link me to that creepazoid! And another <laughs> thing, the police and government and society in the outside world are totally powerless! I mean, they just let this idiotic bloodthirsty maniac go buck wild all over town! Sure, I'm a bloodthirsty maniac, but life is pain, right? To live is to hurt other people! Uh, kinda. It's a necessary evil if you want to survive. The act of living itself causes pain for everyone. Just kidding again! <laughs> <laughs> Man, I love this her. This should awesome. be enough to convince you. This murderous fiend is responsible for Chihiro's death. There's clearly a motive, so there should be no doubt. Are a you motive? sure about that, though? Remember what Monokuma told us? If someone didn't murder and graduate within 24 hours, an embarrassing memory or secret would be revealed. Well, let's assume that Toko's secret was about Genocide Jack. If a secret like that came to light, Toko's life would have undoubtedly been forever ruined. So she had a very clear motive to never have that side of herself exposed. Interesting. Very, very, very interesting. But sorry, as much as I hate to admit it, I'm not the culprit. Huh? What? But I cannot imagine anyone other than you could murder someone in such a bizarre fashion. Maybe so, maybe so, but nevertheless, it's the truth. Do you really expect any of us to believe you? Yeah. I could never believe a word you say, you monster! Well, you're quick to jump on that. Maybe... Maybe she's totally right about that, but... But something's still bothering me. What she said. I need to get some more details about all of this. Sorry, but I didn't kill anyone! You say that, but do you really expect any of us to believe it? Perhaps if you had an alibi, that would change things. Oh, an alibi, huh? Now we're talking! When you compare your past murders to this incident, the modus operandi matches completely. Uh, no it doesn't. No, it's wrong! Are the methods of murder really exactly the same? I'm not so sure about that. I think there's a slight difference between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. Slight difference? There's quite a few huh? differences. How's it any different? Uh-oh, you don't know? Well then, human garbage, let me tell you! <laughs> I murder with passion and conviction. I consider myself a professional, and I have a very particular way of doing things. Imagine you go to a fancy Italian restaurant. They're very picky about the noodles, the sauce, everything. But what happened to Chihiro? It'd be like if that same Italian restaurant started using ragu or Chef Boyardee. Oh, that'd be a travesty. This is no creation of mine. Let me rephrase that in a way that maybe makes more sense. No, I got it. There are two clear differences between the Genocide Jack cases and this one. There's one clear difference between the murders. The photos from the other Genocide Jack cases, look at the neck and stomach. Here you'll see a clear difference. I got it! For one, the cause of death is different. In the Genocide Jack murders, all the victims were killed the same way. According to the case file, they were all apparently killed with a pair of scissors. But Jihiro died from a blow to the head, right? Ah, yes! That is remarkably different from the other murders. Wouldn't it be strange for someone who kills the same way without fail to suddenly change their method? And there's yeah, more. Yeah, it would be. 
one more conflicting detail. That's right! In my recipe of murder, if the bloody message is the tortellini, then the arrangement of the body would be the pesto sauce! Mm, that's actually pretty tasty. Please stop comparing killing people to cooking? So, are you saying the other difference has to do with how the body was arranged? That's right, the second difference is related to how she was suspended. In the photos of the other genocide jack cases, all the other victims were stabbed through their hands. Here you'll see how... Just to clear difference, what was used to suspend her. Do you her. remember what the killer used to suspend her? They used some kind of rope to hang her up by her wrists. What is your point? Well, in all the previous genocide jack cases, something else was used to suspend them. Scissors! Specifically, pairs of razor-sharp scissors. And guess what? I use my own specially designed scissors for the murders and the arrangement! Not that. Like I said, I'm a <laughs> professional, so naturally I'm very picky about the tools I use. I can't use those scissors that barely cut construction paper. And, 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 and you know what else? Big Mac said there's two differences, but he's wrong. Big Mac? Yeah. Are you referring to me? Yes, you whopper. Listen up, Big Mac! There's actually one more difference! Huh? Huh? My word, you really didn't notice? Take a look at who the victims were in each Genocide Jack case! There's a pattern there, just waiting to be discovered. A pattern? Figure that out, and it'll be plain as death why I couldn't have possibly killed that little lolly girl. Let's see... There's a pattern surrounding the Genocide Jack victims, and Chiro didn't fit it? Look at the names of every victim. What you'll notice is... I, I think I figured out. I know why she couldn't have killed Chihiro. Because she was her lover! Is it because Chihiro was a girl? Bingo! Bull died right on the money! What are you talking about? In all the Genocide Jack cases, all the victims had something in common. They all had a penis. Ken Harada, 32. Tetsuhiro Honda, 17. Shoji Kaku, 23. Kano Asei, 14. Takeshi Yoshida, 30. Komatsuna Taro, Takafumi Gono, Uchida Naohiya, Takeshi Matsumui, Yuto Yumejima. There was no end to it. They were all... guys? Yep. That's right! The people I kill with such passion and conviction are all adorable little men! <laughs> I can't believe I said it! I'm so embarrassed! Oh my god, I get so horny when I kill men! What the hell is wrong with you? I can't help it! I'm just a full throttle boy on boy fangirl! And the <laughs> mopey side of me just hates it! She likes Yuri more than but that! now I'm on the fast track to becoming a full fledged fan madam! So since Chihiro was a girl and not an adorable little man, you wouldn't kill her? Would an Italian chef suddenly start making ramen just because they're both noodles? Don't be stupid. I yeah, have seriously. too much passion and conviction to cross that line. That's the absolute reality of a one and only. We get it. You've clearly explained your hobby and your philosophy. But that's not all there is to it. It's a different matter entirely. When you're forced to kill in order to survive. Quiet, lowly cur! Ah. Lowly cur? In your face, but kakaka! I would never kill for a reason as petty as mere survival. And if by some fluke I did kill to survive, why would I bother with the message and arrangement? It'd make me the obvious suspect! Right? That does make some amount of sense. Plus, whatever reason I have for killing, I would never leave out my prized scissors! Who would go out of their way to use a big, stupid, heavy dumbbell? Maybe right. you use the dumbbell because you couldn't find any scissors in the school. Any scissors? I don't just use any scissors. I only use my own set of high-class envy of the entire world scissors! They rival Sweeney Todd's blade! Okay, whatever. There still aren't any in the school. Are you sure about that? da 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 I love this pose. That's an awesome pose. Look at that beautiful pose. That's awesome. She's fully equipped. That's right. So I can kill anywhere, anytime. Why would I resort to dumbbells or rope when I have my trusty scissors by my side? What are the scissors you even got? You can't, can you? Gutter dogs, all of you. Not to mention, I have no clue how to tie a good knot. <laughs> so rope's totally out of the question anyway. <laughs> <laughs> 
I have no idea what's going on anymore. Could such a heinous villain really be innocent? But the body really was suspended, right? And nobody but the police knew about that. Yeah. That's why we figured it had to be the real deal and not some copycat killer or whatever. Actually, hold on. There is one person. One person who could have copied the Genocide Jack cases. Hit for me, you fat bastard! Here's my answer. Byakuya, it's possible you could have found out, isn't it? You'd have no problem gaining access to classified government documents or internal police records. Plus, you'd already looked through the Genocide Jack file before this all happened, hadn't you? Are you saying Mr. Togami did it? Then, the reason he pushed the theory of Genocide Jack being the killer so hard was... To fuck with Toko. Because he wanted to pin the crime on her. So, he rearranged the scene to disguise it and make it look like I put my stamp on it! The adorable glasses man was behind it all! Oh, so horny! He's making me horny! Well, Byakuya, what's your response? I see. So now the suspicion falls on me. Then I must ask. When would you say I began acting suspicious? Surely you must have an answer. Hmm. Looking back and thinking about it now... Always. The way you were acting right before we discovered the body was a little strange. In the locker room, they're suspicious. Very suspicious indeed. Wouldn't you agree? Huh? Suspicious? It seems nobody searched the locker rooms. Let's start with the girls' locker room. You wanted to go to the girls' locker room right away, right? But since you're a guy... I should have naturally thought of the boys' locker room first. Is that what you want to say? The victim yeah. was Chihiro, a girl. Hence why I said we should check the girls' locker room. Yeah, but how would you know the victim was Chihiro, stupid Nothing idiot? strange about that, I'd say. On the contrary, there's something very strange. Okay, then. What's so strange about it? Go ahead. Share with the rest of the class. There was a clear contradiction in what Byakuya just said. I need to make it clear to everyone. No! I'm gonna go in blind. Just kidding. So, you said Byakuya was acting kinda weird before we found the body. Yeah. But he was acting weird... How? If you're presented with the opportunity to check out the girls' locker room... Shut up! You absolutely take it! That's a natural reaction for any guy! No, shut you. The victim was Chihiro, who... No, that's wrong! <laughs> the victim was Chihiro, no, that's wrong! Uh, yeah, the victim is Chihiro, you stupid idiot. I'll tell you what's so strange about that. Because up until we actually discovered the body, we couldn't have known who the victim was. Yeah, seriously. So your claim that you went to the girls' locker room first because Chihiro was the victim doesn't hold up. I see. That's a good answer, I must admit. Are you doing this on purpose? Very interesting indeed. But your reasoning is still too weak. Huh? I'll give some seasoning to my reasoning. What's wrong? Is that it? Surely you've got more than that. Go ahead. Show us. What's with Byakuya's attitude? It's like he doesn't even care. Got a corner, but he's acting like it's nothing to do with it. What's the matter? You're not finished already, are you? There must be more to it. There is. I think. You there dick. is more to it. Think about it. We just talked about the differences between this case and past Genocide Jack incidents. The proof you're looking for is hidden in there. Oh? Proof that I'm the culprit, you mean? Well, the differences between this case and other Genocide Jack murders. The evidence that proves Byakuya is responsible is hidden in there? What could it be? What? The difference between the cases? You want me to explain it again? Yeah. When I want to kill, I use my very own special scissors. And I use those same scissors to arrange the body. But Chihiro was suspended with... It was some kind of rope, was it not? That's right! It absolutely was! Was it really a rope, then though? there must be something very fishy indeed about that rope. Hey, Byakuya, where'd you get it from, huh? 
I'd never seen that rope before in my life. Liar! Actually, I'm pretty sure you have seen it before. Because, you see, that rope, or should I say, that extension the cord? The extension cord! What? An extension cord? Yakuya, you've used the extension cord in the library more than once, haven't you? And the same extension cord that was in the library all this time went missing after the murder. And there's no way someone who uses that extension cord as much as you do wouldn't discover that fact. Right? Yakuya must be the one who took the extension cord. I can't imagine any other possibility. That's really what you think? Then your conclusion is something like this? I killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, then hung her up and wrote that bloody message. I intentionally made it look like Genocide Jack was behind it. Is that about right? I think you... Huh. He's doing it again. He's totally calm, totally unconcerned. As if he's not even involved. Wait, not even involved? What's wrong? I asked you if you think that's what happened. Hell yes, that's what happened. So that's it, right? Byaki is the killer. I don't disagree with not disagreeing. He kept calling <laughs> this a game, right? So he'd be totally willing to do something like this to win. Um, sorry, oh. but could we hold on just a second? I... I think we need to talk about this a little more. Huh. Do we really need to? We've already decided who did it. Yeah, but I you know, guys are wrong. But still, there's something that's still bothering me. Is that right? And what, pray tell, is still bothering you? I killed her in the girls' locker room, then disguised my crime. Yeah, but how the hell are you gonna get in there? Specifically, I dressed it up to make it look like it was the work of a homicidal psychopath. What about all that bothers you? Uh, wait. What was that just now? Something's not right. Shiro's body was definitely found in the girls' locker room, but then does that mean... Can I really just accept what Kaka said as the truth? No, I don't think so. There's definitely something wrong off about what he said. I'm guessing the scene of the crime. You say you killed Chihiro in the girls' locker room, right? But are you sure about that? How disappointing. Oh, Sorry. What kind of question I'm gonna is keep that? Doing that uh, Even the in the world already. of disappointments, this is a true letdown. She was found dead in the girls' locker room. There is absolutely no question about that. How could the scene of the crime have been anywhere else? I got evidence well, for that. I think it's entirely possible that she was killed somewhere else, then carried there later, along with the rest of the murder scene. The uh, rest of the murder scene? <laughs> that was awfully specific. Please tell me you have a reason for saying all of that. Easy. I believe I do. Hey, Bianca Kaka, did you just... Did I just take you off guard? When the story suddenly moved to the crime scene, Bianca Kaka, who had been so confident up till now, maybe Bukaka, never even realized that the actual scene of the crime could have been somewhere else. Hey, don't just move on without permission. What do you mean she was killed somewhere else? Come on, Makoto. If uh, there's any chance the murder took place somewhere else, let's see the proof. Uh, here's the proof in your face. Evidence that shows the murder took place somewhere else. There's something of switch between the boys and the girls' locker room. I got it! The proof that she was killed somewhere else is... the poster that's hanging in each locker room. Your proof? Is some posters? The poster yeah. in the girls' locker room was a picture of a big boobed supermodel. Big boobed But don't you think that's kind of strange? Yeah, why would a girl care about tits? And why is there blood on the tits? Why would the girls' locker room have a poster like that? I bet those massive jugs of hers were totally fake! <laughs> Pop them with your scissors! Meanwhile, the boys' locker room had a poster of the super popular boy band Tornado. Okay, screw green hair. Red hair is cute. Look at that little smile. Look at those red eyes. It's beautiful. Again, that doesn't really seem to belong in a boy's locker room. So you're saying that maybe the posters were switched? 
And yep. there's one other thing I noticed about the locker rooms. You know what I'm talking about, right, Sakura? You're referring to my, my protein coffee. coffee, aren't you? Protein coffee? Yeah, it's shit. Don't drink it. While I was in the girls' locker room earlier, I spilled some protein coffee on the carpet. But I noticed that after the murder, the stain had been totally scrubbed away. No, it's not the stain was scrubbed away. It was moved. I got it! The stain on the girls' locker room carpet wasn't scrubbed away. In fact, I found it on the boys' locker room carpet. That's definitely the stain from my protein coffee. That's the stain from my shit. Then, does that mean that the carpets were switched too? But why would anyone do that? To move the murder scene from one locker room to the other. It's certainly plausible, don't you think? Yep. In other words, in order to completely swap the scene of the crime, the bloodstained poster and carpet were moved along with the dead body. By doing this, the killer was able to change the entire room where the murder took place. Oh, I can yeah. certainly follow your reasoning, but why would the culprit bother doing that? Huh? Why would they go through all that trouble of switching the scene of the crime? Actually, an even bigger question. If the murder did take place in the boys' locker room, then how did Chihiro get in the boys' locker room in the first place? To get huh. into the locker rooms, you have to swipe your e-handbook across the card reader device. But Chihiro's handbook should have only allowed her access to the girls' locker room. What if she wasn't a girl? She had no way to get into the boys' locker room to begin with. No, she did have a way, and I can tell you what it was. I highly doubt that. Shut up! I'm telling you, I know how she could have done it. Is he right? Could Shiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room sort of Broken knee handbook. Is it really possible? Could Chihiro really have gotten into the boys' locker room somehow? Ah! I got it! She must have hacked her e-handbook! She was the ultimate programmer, after all. I'm sure that would have been no problem for her! No, I don't think that's it. She used the thing that was in the main hall. Huh? What thing? I'm talking about Leon's handbook, of course. Uh, no, that's no, wrong. wrong. No, I don't think Chihiro used Leon's handbook. Why not? Because Leon's handbook was broken. Oh. Well, then, yeah, I guess that'd be pretty impossible, huh? I am struck silent by how quickly you gave up. <laughs> Plus, isn't there a regulation against using someone else's handbook? Uh, Actually, not borrowing. The rule states that loaning your handbook is prohibited. It says nothing about borrowing one. In other words, you could borrow a dead person's handbook all you want, and you'd be safe. Yup, yup, yup! Hit the nail square on the noggin! Of course, if it were broken, that wouldn't make any sense anyway. So then, she must have hacked hers, like I said. She used her ultimate programmer skills and... <coughs> you can't fix an e-handbook! The instant you open one up, a security buzzer starts blaring! And then you get stabbed through the hand! So, if she didn't use Leon's handbook, and she didn't modify her own handbook... Maybe Mr. Nayagi's initial assumption is just... wrong? Shut up, fat boy! I know what it I'm talking about! It seems like there's no way she could have got into the boys' locker room. So, I guess so. Okay, then! I vote for Byakuya! Uh, is that it, then? Chihiro was killed in the girls' locker room, and Biakaka is the one who really did it. Really? But still, I don't know what else I can do. Hold on a second. I agree with you, though. I think you're on the right track. What the? You finally decide to open your mouth, and that's what you've got to say? There's no yep. way she could get in the boys' locker room, right? So, why are you so sure she couldn't get in? There's still one other way she could have gained access. She dug her way in. What? What are you talking about? What other way is there? Well, to explain that, why don't we take a little break from the trial? I'd like you all to come see something. Huh. Wait, 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 wait. Just what do you think you're doing? We're doing a recess, stupid. Don't worry. This will make the whole trial more exciting. I'm sure that thought must please you. Huh? It'll make things more exciting? 
Yep. Well, all right then. I declare an official class trial recess. Huh? For real? Now then, what is it you want to show us? It better not be boring or I'll be very unhappy. And is that it's in that moment Kyoko starts taking off her top. Oh, I have no doubt it'll meet your lofty expectations. <laughs> so, shall we go? Recess. So before I even knew what was happening, the class trial had been put on hold. We headed off with Kyoko in the lead. Where she took us was... Back to the crime scene! The girls' locker room? We've already searched this place top to bottom! What are you trying to pull, Missy? <laughs> I'd like you to examine the victim's body one more time. You want to check it again? Be sure to examine the entire body very carefully. Take your time. Examine her carefully? Like using our hands? Uh, not you, creepy pervert. No way, no way, no way, no way, no way! It's probably best if I don't run my hands all over a girl's dead body. It's not that I'm creeped out or anything, it's just... Based on religious grounds, you know? Yeah, sure, okay. Very well. I'll do it. But, but you're a girl. You shouldn't have to touch a dead body. Just let one of the boys do it. I'm more masculine than any boy here. No, it's okay. I think Chihiro would rather have a girl examine her. So just leave this to me. S sakura What is this? Some kind of secret girl-on-girl -girl action? Is that what you two are about? That's not it at all. Stop <laughs> screwing around. I love you, Jill. You're awesome. Okay, here I go. I'm sorry, Chihiro. Please excuse the intrusion. Putting her hands together in a brief prayer, Sakura then began to quietly examine her body. Be sure to check her entire body, and I believe we will solve this particular mystery. Her entire body? I know you say that, but... What? This is... What is this... I'M STRIPPING! What is it? Not possible. It's not possible. Um, it is very possible. Sakura's eyes were staring wildly at Chihiro's lifeless form. Her massive frame trembled. This... this girl is... Is what? Is a boy! What? Ah, I see. So, she was actually a he. Interesting. Thank you for confirming this fact. What? <laughs> I love how she's like, yeah, that's good. Wait, what? You're joking, right? I wouldn't joke about this. Ben, ben it's really true? Yep. Jiro was a guy? Uh-huh. Oh, what? You guys didn't know? Heck, I knew that right off the bat. Wait, what? Jiro Fujisaki was totally a guy. He was a cross guy. Oh, uh, so no, no, no. that's what Kyoko wanted to show everyone, huh? Interesting. <laughs> yes, that certainly does make things much more exciting. Now let's ride this wave of excitement back to the courtroom and get back to the trial. Ahem. <clears throat> I do apologize for keeping you waiting. Now then... Let's resume the class trial. We've all just learned of the shocking revelation that Chihiro was actually a boy. Let's pick up from there. Yes, well, I don't know Damn. his reason for hiding it, but the fact is, Chihiro was not a girl, but a boy. Do you think Chihiro was a, actually a guy? The thought never even crossed my mind. And because the victim was male, he would have had no problem gaining access to the boys' locker room. Assuming his handbook did, in fact, list his gender as male, then yes, that would be true. Of course his handbook said he was a boy. He dressed like a girl, but he was a boy through and through. So then, there should be no issue with Makoto's initial assertion. The victim was killed in the boys' locker room and was then later moved to the girls' locker room. Yeah. 
and the killer could have easily used Sayaka or Junko's handbook to get into the girls' locker room. So Chihiro really was killed in the boys' locker room? I still don't understand the motive for moving the body, but yes, that does seem plausible. Well, I must admit, I did find it rather odd. I knew he felt a little... off. There was a certain incongruity to his female body. This is the most titillating situation! Not really, so now have to... everything has been connected. All the mysteries have finally become clear. Okay, well, connected or clear or whatever, we still think you're the killer, remember? <laughs> very interesting. This has become very interesting indeed. Ah, he's off in his own little world. What a freak. What about you, Makoto? After everything we've learned, do you still think Byakuya's the killer? I don't no. know. Without a doubt, Byakuya's the one that made Chihiro's death look like Genocide Jack did it. But... But... But I... I think he might not actually be the killer after all. What? But aren't you the one who accused him in the first place? Who... Easy going about all this. Like he's enjoying us solving the mystery. The way he's acting, it makes it seem like it doesn't have anything to do with him. And you think that might be because it doesn't have anything to do with him? Yeah, pretty much. Plus, the evidence he left behind was a little too... How can I put it? Overt. He consciously chose to use the extension cord, knowing it could connect him to the murder. At least, that's how I see it. And Byakuya, when you found out the murder took place in the boys' locker room, it seemed to rattle you. And then again, when you found out Chihiro was actually a guy, if you really were the killer, that stuff wouldn't have had any effect on you. So uh -huh. that's your thinking, huh? Well, it bothers me that you don't have more concrete reasons, but... It's fine. I guess I'll mark it as correct, for the time being. Mark it as... correct? He's right. I am not the culprit. I just happened to come across the corpse in the girls' locker room and decided to alter it. Man, Are what you fucking fuck? with us right now? No, I am not effing with you right now. <laughs> you can't say I'm fuck. telling you the truth. Well, I find it very hard to believe. Go ahead. Find it very hard to believe. You're free to be executed along with the rest of us. If you're really telling the truth, then why? Why do you do that to his body? My to make reasons it more fun. hardly matter right now. Uncovering the culprit is much more important, wouldn't you say? Now then, if it wasn't me, who was it? Well, I don't think I can say for sure without talking about it a little more. We're yeah. seriously gonna keep going? We're all good, aren't we? I thought it was clear Byakuya did it. Yeah, he didn't do no, it, stupid. I'm with Makoto. If there's any doubt whatsoever, we need to explore every possibility, because if we're wrong, we all die here. That's true. Very well then. I'm with you too. Damn straight. Count me in. Quit flip-flopping, you bitch! Do you not have a mind of your own? Of course I do. What am I, an ant or something? Yeah, you are. Anyway, let's discuss this all as a group one more time. We still have time to make our decision. That's very true. Our lives are all on the line. Excellent. Then shall we resume our game of hide and seek? But if Byakuya didn't do it, then who's the real killer? Who murdered Chihiro? So one thing we can be sure that we know about the killer: the killer was able to gain access to the real murder scene, which means the killer is a guy. Yes! Since the crime scene was the boys' locker room, you would need a boys' handbook to get in. Since Leon's handbook is apparently broken, the killer would have had to use their own. In other words, it had to have been a guy. That's still not enough. I need to find some more clues. Okay. Isn't there a single clue that might lead us to who Oops. did it? <laughs> well, clues are one thing, but... Did nobody get a look at the killer? I'm sure if someone saw the killer, they would have said something by now. Perhaps someone saw the victim at some point. Pow, 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 pow. Enough for now. Yeah. All we need right now is any kind of new info. It's over. It's all over. Oh my you god, you know give it to me. You who saw the victim? The killer. 
And only the killer. Uh, no, that's no, wrong. I believe someone else did see the victim before he was murdered. What do you think, Celeste? Now that you mention it, yes, I did see him. Huh? Really? Well, oh, yeah. But I suppose only Makoto knows about <laughs> this. Makoto. The rest of you had no idea, did you? That is why you're all making such ugly noises. <laughs> oink, 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 oink. Just hurry up and tell us! It was last night, right before night time. I saw Chihiro in the dormitory warehouse. It's not kind I of monotone. saw him stuffing a track jacket into a duffel bag, and then, I assume, he headed off to exercise. A track jacket and a duffel bag? But we didn't find anything like that at the murder scene. It seems likely that the culprit destroyed them to get rid of any evidence. And that is when he said something that struck me as rather odd. Well, I, I better get going. I'm kind of in a hurry. Chihiro told me he was in a hurry. But why would he be in a hurry? Only if someone were waiting for him, I should think. So, Mr. Fujisaki was on his way to meet with someone, and then they were going to work out together? But Hina and I had invited him to exercise with us plenty of times, and he always declined. Probably because he was afraid you'd find out the secret he was hiding, right? Yep. Which means that conversely, he must have trusted whoever he was meeting with very much, enough so that he was willing to risk his secret being revealed. Oh, what a marvelous friendship! Yeah, we actually. The point is, whoever he met up with is the culprit, right? So we just gotta figure out who it was. But knowing what we know, I can't even guess. No, you already have what you need to make the connection. Huh? Who? We know who the killer is. Really? Seriously? Who, who is it? Who's the killer? Think back to the track jacket and duffel bag the killer disposed of. Focus on the details of these items, and it should become obvious who was waiting for him. Huh? Are you sure about that? You really think we can figure out who did it based on two pieces of evidence that we don't have? Yeah. Yes, telephone what? wire. You want to track down some fingerprints or something? Even if we had the equipment for that, we wouldn't know how to use it. As was noted, the evidence is already gone. There's nothing to get fingerprints from. Maybe, but we can make certain inferences if we just take the time to talk it out. Easy for you to say, but fine. Celeste, did you notice anything special about the bag or jacket? The bag was... Just a normal duffel bag from the warehouse. All the bags in there are the same, so I can't imagine what would make that one special. It was Chihiro's favorite color. Well, if I remember right, there was a decent variety of tracksuits to choose from. Do you think there might be some connection between the culprit and Chihiro's jacket? Perhaps. Yeah. Let's explore that and talk a bit more about the jacket he took. Does Chihiro's track jacket really hold some clue about the killer? Somehow, it's really hard to believe. Oh, so let's account again. First of all, we know where Chihiro was headed. He was on his way to go exercise. So next we have to ask, uh -huh. why did he choose the specific tracksuit that he did? What do you mean, the specific tracksuit? I got it! He picked that tracksuit because... It matched the one the culprit was wearing! Yeah, that's helpful, you so, idiot. So, what you're saying is... The killer was wearing the same blue tracksuit as him? Oh, shit! No, How do you know what color? We never said anything about the color. Hold on a second, Mondo. What did you just say? Huh? What'd I say? When Celeste testified a few minutes ago, she said... I saw him stuffing a truck jacket into a duffel bag. And then I assumed he had enough to exercise. She never said anything about the jacket's color. So why did you say Chihiro's blue tracksuit? What are you... You just... Hey, Celeste. What color was Chihiro's tracksuit? Oh, shit. As a matter of fact, it was... Blue? And before we began the trial, 
Did you tell anyone that? The only one I told about any of this was you. Then... Mondo, how did you know what color Shihiro's tracksuit was? Yo, what because the fuck, I, man? I just... I'm sure he saw the clothes at some point in the investigation. No, that no, can't be No, they were destroyed, it. stupid. The bag and clothes were surely disposed of by the time we began our investigation. Then the only reason he could have known what color the tracksuit was is if he saw Cherry with it before he died! That's the only possibility! Cherry? Cherry? <laughs> Are you talking about your hero? So, how about it? Did you see the tracksuit or didn't you? Just by chance. I just happened to see it last night. He walked really? past me, and he was carrying the tracksuit in his hands. No, nope, that's a big lie. That can't be it either. According to Celeste's testimony... She stuffed the jacket into her back in a hurry. It was almost like she was trying to hide it. And just like that, she was going... When Celeste noticed it, Chihiro made a point of making sure the jacket was completely in the back. If you just ran into him briefly, you couldn't possibly have seen what color the tracksuit was. Yeah. It would appear you've dug your own grave. Dun dun dun! Perhaps. But you handed him the shovel, didn't you? That's why you said what you did. Focus on the tracksuit and it'll be obvious who he met with? What a bunch of nonsense. Ah, now I understand. It was all one big bluff, wasn't it? Yeah, that's right, gambler. Your true intention was to draw a slip of the tongue from the culprit. That's why you said you knew who did it, to put them on edge. That's right. However, Mondo was my target all along. I had my suspicions about him from the very beginning. But why? What made you so suspicious? That's a good question. I bet the way he talked. There was a certain turning point that tipped me off. Maybe you didn't notice it, Mondo, but you tend to refer to men and women differently. You only call guys dude. For girls, it's chick. And after he was killed, you happened to refer to him as dude. Once I picked up on that, it occurred to me that Mondo knew something we didn't. Did you notice such a tiny detail? Always, Are always pay such a tiny rich? detail. You're positively frightful! No. I'm not the frightful one. Not nearly as frightful as someone capable of murdering a friend. Yeah. Mondo, was it really you? Did you really kill Chihiro? Yeah, he did. I, 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 uh, I didn't kill anyone. You've been all over me, judging everything I say, putting words in my mouth. <laughs> what gives <laughs> you the right to treat me like a goddamn criminal? Because you are a goddamn criminal. Yeah, he would never do something like that. This is a false accusation! It's true. My reasoning on that is pretty shaky. That was fast. Well, <laughs> this does present us with a problem. It seems we are all out of leads. <laughs> my time has nearly come. Well, about to have time, That's Fatty. What my little ghost friend is telling me. Oh, yeah. That reminds me. Kifumi, weren't you telling me you found some evidence? Really? What kind of evidence? Actually, you know, now that I'm thinking about it here calmly, it might not be all that relevant. Jeez, Whatever. does your confidence just get up and walk away? It's fine, man. Just tell us. If you really insist, then, um, here it is. Hmm? What do you have there? It happens to be an e-handbook. I found it laying on the ground, so I scooped it up. Down on the ground, right? Then it must belong to Chihiro. God! We know Chihiro's handbook was missing from the scene of the crime, right? For a fact. For a fact indeed. I was totally sure I'd found it. Then it must hold Good some job, clue monkey about man. the culprit, right? Well, that's what I was hoping. But it's busted. It won't even turn on. I imagine the culprit broke it to get rid of any evidence after the murder. That's odd. Mm -hmm. I didn't think the handbooks were quite so fragile. You're right. They're not. They're totally waterproof and shock resistant. It would take an awful lot to break one. And yet, this one does appear to be broken. As is Leon's, sitting useless in the main hall. For all your confidence, <sighs> That is a remarkably high failure rate. Uh -huh. <laughs> Do you think there might be some kind of mystery in there somewhere? How precisely did the handbooks get broken? 
How did the handbook break? There's only one possible explanation. You think the weak point? You already told us before that the handbook has one weak point, didn't you? Yeah. You remember that? We're smart. We remember everything. Uh, sure. Maybe I let that slip. But I never told anyone what the weak point actually was. But if the handbook is supposed to never break, and two of them broke in quick succession, then... Then we can only assume that someone's figured out its weakness. You know yeah. what the weakness is, right, Monokuma? So, what is it? Huh? You're asking me? I think it's a necessary piece of information if you want this to be a fair trial. Damn but straight. if I tell you, and someone else decides to copy it, that would be very not good. Just tell us already. Why would we want to break our own handbooks? Hey, stupid moron. Uh, oh, well, I have a weakness for pushy demands. But you're sure you won't follow their example? We won't. Then allow me to make a special announcement. The weak point of my cutting-edge e-handbook is... When it's exposed to high temperatures for too long, it will suffer a meltdown and totally break! I flippin' knew it! You knew it? Yeah, because I found the handbook laying on the floor of the sauna. The temperature in the sauna can reach over 200 degrees. Strange how you don't get burnt, huh? It's because when you sweat, it creates it's a... It's because as your sweat evaporates, yeah. it creates a cooling layer of air around your skin. Like a cool shield. If the hot air of the sauna were somehow pushed directly onto your skin, you'd definitely get fried. That layer of air would get blown away. That's why you may feel a burning when you move around. So yep. when you're in a sauna, make sure to keep nice and still. Or you turn into a roasted potato. Interesting. I learned one new fact today. That is a mere trifling speck of knowledge. Hey, Taka, here's another fact. Mondo killed Chihiro. Anyway, if you found the victim's handbook in the sauna, then the killer must have been purposely trying to raise its temperature in order to break it. Meaning the culprit somehow knew its weakness. But how'd they find out? Monokuma said he didn't tell anyone, right? Indeed. Quite the mystery. What if they found out by accident? Right? What do you mean, by accident? What if the killer took their own handbook into the sauna, not knowing its weakness, and it broke? They'd realize it was broken, of course, and it wouldn't be hard to figure out why. And once they had Chihiro's handbook, they knew they had an easy way to dispose of it. I won't say it's not possible, but... Who would have done something like that? I don't know of anyone who took their handbook into the sauna. There were two people, either Taka or Mondo, and Taka was nearly butt naked. I might know someone who did. Whoa! Seriously? I think the one who may have taken their handbook into the sauna was... <laughs> Might have brought their handbook into the sauna. Had to be the one who wore all their clothes into the sauna. It was... You did. Here's my answer. Mondo, your handbook got broken in the sauna, didn't it? Dun, dun, dun. What? What? Why do you keep accusing him? Mondo and Taka had an endurance contest in the sauna not too long ago, remember? And for the contest, Mondo just so happened to keep his school uniform on. Yep. But little did he realize he'd also left his handbook in one of his uniform pockets. And when it was all over, Mondo discovered that taking your handbook into the sauna could easily destroy it. No, wait, hold on! You've got it all wrong! He would never kill! I don't accept this! Show me the proof! The actual solid proof! I mean, I don't want to believe it either, but... I've got to count something that proves it beyond a shadow of a doubt. The broken handbook. Let's test Makoto's assertion. If what he says is correct, then Mondo, you broke your own handbook. Interesting. In other words, if Mondo's handbook is actually broken, then that proves that what Makoto said is right. Damn straight. Well, my goddamn handbook works just fine. Damn it! See? Look! Makoto was wrong after all! Mondo wouldn't hurt a fly! I'll shoot. 
Yeah, yeah, yeah. Let's test my if what Just he said this, you broke this, your own. This. In other words, if Mund then that proves that what Well my goddamn handbook works just fine. No, that's yeah, wrong. wrong. Freaking liar. Mondo, the handbook you have right now, is it really yours? The fuck is that supposed to mean? The broken handbook that was Please. in the main hall. It's not yours, is it? Isn't that one actually yours? What the heck are you talking about? What I mean is, I think Mondo swapped his handbook out for one that actually works. I think he took Leon's handbook and replaced it with his own. After all, Monokuma said himself that Leon's handbook never should have broken. That's uh -huh. right! The punishment it suffered wasn't nearly enough to destroy it. So then... The broken handbook in the main hall is actually Mondo's, which yep. would mean that the handbook Mondo has right now is actually Leon's, yes? Yep. Doesn't that violate the school regulation that says loaning out your handbook is prohibited? Well, here's how I look at it. There is a rule about loaning your handbook to another student, but if they're dead, they're not a student. It's kind of a gray area, I admit. Huh. But no worries. If anything, it just makes things more interesting. As well, such, Jesus. I decree that exchanging handbooks with a corpse is not a violation of the rules. Well, Mondo, if I'm wrong about this, you're welcome to say so. I'm happy to admit I made a mistake, but... Son of a bitch. What's wrong, bro? <laughs> Come on. Tell him he's wrong! You are wrong! You have to be wrong! Everything you just said is wrong! You made it all up! Okay, all then right. why don't we look back on this case one more time, from the beginning. That way, everything will become clear. And we'll all see if I was right or wrong. Guess what, we're gonna do a closing argument on this bitch. Hey! Oh, it's so pretty! Haha! <laughs> there we go! Splatter! Blood there. Steam room. Here's exactly what happened. First, let's take a look back to before the incident. Okay. Last night, Celeste saw Chihiro in the warehouse, correct? Yeah. At the time, she was apparently stuffing something into a duffel bag. Saw but a something was a blue, blue tracksuit. Track you can confirm this, right, Celeste? With bag in hand, Chihiro headed out, even though it was officially nighttime. Chihiro, she bad made girl. her way to the locker room, specifically the I boys' mean, locker bad room. Boy. But how could the victim, who was apparently a girl, access the boys' locker room? Simple, because she was really a he, dun, dun, which is dun. why he was able to use his own handbook to gain entrance to the boys' locker room. Hi. Once inside, Yo. he met with someone there, and the person he met was the one who killed him. It seems likely that the killer grabbed the nearby dumbbell. 
approach the unsuspecting Chihiro. All right, guys, I gotta go put my dog out for a second. Be right back. And attacked him. And that's where the blood stains on the poster and carpeting in the boys' locker room came from. It was likely in the heat of the moment. The body was arranged, but the murder itself felt unplanned. Okay, we're back. Which is why the killer hurried to try and hide the act. First, pulling up the bloodstained carpet. Then, removing the bloody poster. And carrying everything over to the girl's side. And finally carrying the corpse into the girl's locker room. A girl's handbook was necessary to get into the locker room, of course. But this alone doesn't prove that the killer was necessarily a girl. After all, Sayaka and Junko's handbooks had been placed in the main hall. But who's did he steal? Using Sayaka's one of or Junko's? A boy could get into the girls' locker room without much problem. And that's exactly how the killer did it. With the carpet and the poster they brought with them, they got to work. They changed up the rooms. They changed the layout of the boys' and girls' locker room in what you might call a crime scene switch. Dun dun dun! That could have been the end of things, but no. But Kaka! Yakuya discovered the body and decided to intervene in the situation, making things even more complicated. And dragging out the trial longer. So, after stumbling on the crime scene, he went and grabbed the extension cord from the library. And then he got to work. He used the cord to he string the up poor dead corpse. lifeless body. Then, using the victim's own blood, he left a grisly message there at the scene of the crime. He wanted to create the illusion that Genocide Jack was responsible for the slaughter. And around the same time that Byakuya was putting together this facade, the killer, having already Ow. disposed of Chihiro's bag and other belongings, arrived at the sauna. Oh, my thumb hurts. There, they planned to destroy the last piece of evidence. Chihiro's handbook. <laughs> and just as the killer expected, the steamy sauna was enough to ruin the electronic gadget. Somehow, the killer knew that the handbook couldn't stand up to the heat of the sauna. And the reason they knew that is because the sauna had already wrecked their own handbook. And that's how it all played out. Isn't that right, Mondo? Isn't that right, Mondo Arata? Dun dun dun! The case has been solved! <laughs> Wait! No! This can't be right! Where's your evidence? Yeah! Where's your evidence? You need evidence! You need proof! Without any proof, you can't pin any of this on him! Evidence that Mondo is the killer. That already revealed itself earlier in the trial. Taka's just being a little bitch about it. I can somehow show where Mondo's handbook is right now. Once I do that, everything will become clear. No! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refuse you! False! Bum, pa, 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 Show pa, me some evidence! Pa, pa, pa. I won't listen! False! Uh. Pa, pa. I refuse to vote! Show me some evidence! You're wrong! I won't listen! I refute you! False! Show me some evidence! Shit! I won't listen! False! You're corrupt! Fuck! Show me some evidence! This should prove it! I'm gonna take some points off for that shit, damn it! If my thinking so far is right, Mondo must have replaced his broken handbook with Leon's. In which case, 
we can just check each of our handbooks right now. Once we do that, yeah. we'll... We don't gotta do that. Huh? huh? Yeah. Yeah, I did it. I killed him. What? Damn you, Mondo! Oh, cool, still got an A. Yay, 89 minutes. Bro, what are you saying? I got no choice, man. After hearing all that, I gotta just give up. Go ahead, Monokuma. Get it over with. Ask for the goddamn verdict. Roger that! Wait, hold on! No waiting, no holding on. Time for the moment we've all been waiting for. Grab your lever and give it a yank! Well, that sounds kinky. Who will you elect as the blackened this time around? Will you make the right choice or the dreadfully wrong one? What's it gonna be? What's it gonna be? Everyone vote. Who's found guilty? The Monica vote has declared that's Mano Wada is the guilty party. Uh-oh, this time it looks like you got it right again! Yes, it is so. The black that killed Chihiro Fuchisaki was... Ta-da! Mondo Owada! Unbelievable. In case you're wondering, the vote was not unanimous. Kiyotaka chose the wrong answer. You're treading very close to the danger zone, Mr. Ishimaru. You need to be more careful. I, I refuse to believe it! There's no way, no way he would kill someone! Sorry. What, what, what is this? Why are you apologizing? Why? 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 Why did you do it? Now then. Well, it looks like Mondo's taking a vow of silence, so allow me to explain on his behalf. Actually, the story of murder this time is the sad story of two men. Ha! Oh, but for anyone who doesn't really want to hear it, you can hit the circle button to fast forward the text. Anyway, there was once a young boy, and his name was Chihiro Fujisaki. He had an extreme inferiority complex regarding his own lack of strength. You're so weak, even though you're a boy. He heard things like that as long as he could remember, and he couldn't overcome his weakness. On the contrary, he tried to hide and bury himself further and further into that weakness. To take on the fragile form of a petite young girl, he had chosen that as his way out. Um... No, nobody will be able to say anything about it, even though you're a boy. But no matter how tightly he wrapped himself up in that shell, the inferiority complex had already taken root deep inside him and was not so easily weeded out. As it turned out, the shell was completely empty. The complex didn't disappear. It said it only grew stronger and stronger. <laughs> weak. It... Weak, 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 weak. <laughs> Once the killing game had begun here at the school, he had no choice but to accept this fact. After all, this world is survival of the fittest. If you're not strong, you don't survive. And then the lovely and hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. Which of course included Chihiro's embarrassing secret, which I was more than willing to divulge. Even though he dresses like a girl, Chihiro is actually a boy. Hey, um... That was something Chihiro couldn't let anyone find out, no matter the cost. If that was revealed, it would be the end. The heart shell would crack, the armor would fall away. Without a doubt, those around him would torture him more than ever before. Everyone figured being thrust into such a dilemma must have sent him spiraling into despair. What? And yet! Uh, I'm sorry. I'm sorry, I don't really want to talk about it right now. But, but... But I also don't want to leave things the way they are. So, maybe I could talk about it later? After I try my best to become strong, then I can tell everyone. Annoyingly, he used the threat of discovery to motivate himself to become stronger. That's right. Now's my chance. If I want to change. I'm gonna get stronger and accept who I am. Strong enough so that when someone says, even though you're a boy, I'll be okay. I'll get better. With that thought at the front of his mind, he resolved to take immediate action. And so, that day he made the commitment to begin exercising. He was prepared to retain, retrain his mind and body. But sadly, that would be the first and only chance he would get at it. Hey, 
Hey, um... When he decided to start exercising, he thought it'd be good to ask for someone's help. But he wanted to tell that person his secret first, and then ask them to help him from there. And the person he went to... Yeah, that's right. It was me. <laughs> yep, it sure was! <laughs> the biker gang fella had been painfully clear about how important his manly promises were. So Chihiro probably figured that even if he confided in Bondo, his honor would make him keep the secret. Uh-huh. Plus, Mr. Machimondo was the very symbol of a strong man that Chihiro had always aspired to be. Maybe talking to Mondo about it will give me some more courage. So he went to... So he went and asked Mondo to help him become strong. Wait, hold on. I think that's supposed to be Monokuma out there. <laughs> that was his aspiration. And he thought that only with Mondo's support would he ever be able to come close to that. Correct. So then, that must be why Mondo did what he did. To keep the promise made to Chihiro. Huh? Did what he did? You mean that's why Mondo carried Chihiro from the boys' locker room to the girls' locker room? Indeed. Yes, that's exactly what I mean. Um... What did that to cover up what he'd done? Certainly. That could have been part of it, but I don't think it was the main reason. The real purpose was to keep the promise between men he made to Chihiro. But... But how does moving the body keep his secret? Because... Because if everyone knew he'd been killed in the boys' locker room, then everyone would have been arguing about how she got into the boys' locker room, right? Once that started up, at least a few of us would have immediately begun to suspect his identity. So, you try to protect Chihiro's secret by putting him in the girls' locker room and stealing his handbook, see? Then, Mondo did all that to keep the promise he made to Chihiro, who he'd also killed? <laughs> Why would he do that? <laughs> the more I hear you talk, the more I don't understand. I mean, you guys trusted each other, right? <laughs> so why? Why did you? <clears throat> because, no matter what, I didn't want anyone to know. I knew it. So that's what triggered it, after all. The possibility of having your embarrassing memories and secrets exposed. What? What is this? That, that's impossible! Nothing could have been that bad! Something you didn't want anyone to know? Even if it meant killing someone? You're wrong! It's impossible! Don't make me repeat myself. How many times must I repeat myself? To judge others by your own standard is the height of folly. Even if you can't comprehend it, he obviously can. That's all there is to it. <laughs> well, 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 while we're on the subject, why don't I tell you? That embarrassing memory? That secret he didn't want anyone to know? Hey, um... You know what Mondo did? He killed his own brother! <laughs> <laughs> Mondo, the ultimate biker gang leader, makes all the hoodlums and riffraff across the country tremble. But the only reason he had the chance to join the gang in the first place was because of some someone. <laughs> Josuke Higashikita! <laughs> Mondo's older brother name was Daya Owada. Mondo had nothing but respect for him. It was because of Daya that Mondo even got him, ever got on a motorcycle. Mondo's brother was his only family growing up. He was the only one Mondo could trust or respect. Watch him from room all over the place. He wanted to measure up to his big brother, so he imitated him everything he did. Except for that stupid shit hair on his head. Mondo was the epitome of the starry-eyed kid brother. Meanwhile, the charismatic older brother had put together a local motorcycle gang. And before anyone knew it, it had grown into the biggest biker gang in the country. Daya, the older brother, number one of the gang. And his number two, his younger brother, Mondo. In the beginning, everything was peaches and gravy. But when Mondo started to think about how he would have to take over the gang from his brother someday, his brother's greatness, his reputation, began to gnaw at Mondo's very soul. The kid's gonna take over for Daya, huh? Daya created this gang with his bare hands. Mondo's just along for the ride. Can someone like that really be our leader? All that'll do is make the gang look bad. <laughs> Almost every day, Mondo heard the gossip and whispers of the other members of the gang. Which is why... I... I just... I gotta get stronger. Stronger than Daya. Once. Just one time. No matter what, I gotta win. Don't fuck with me! I don't care what it takes, I gotta come out on top! And on the night of his Basic Brothers retirement ceremony, Mondo challenged into a street race. And Mondo was about to fucking die! But during that race, tragedy struck. K 
kid brother pushed ahead with reckless abandon, eager for victory, and dashed into oncoming traffic. But suddenly... Oh no, he got kicked! Tanya! Lying in his kid brother's arms, the older brother delivered his final words. My, my bad, kid. I fucked up. Sorry. Of course he knew it was his brother's fault, but Taya never blamed him for what happened. Hey kid, the rest is up to you. No matter what, you gotta keep this gang together. Cause it's the team. You and me put together. It's a pro- A promise between men. <laughs> he decided to hide the truth of what happened from everyone else in the gang. In order to keep the gang together and keep the promise to his brother. He could never admit to anyone that it was his own weakness that caused the accident. As a result, even stronger, under the banner of the kid who had bested his big brother. Daya was gonna lose himself to his kid brother, so he got stupid and got himself killed. That became the explanation for what happened. Mondo's lie became the truth. He wanted to lead the team so bad, he was willing to tell all kinds of lies about his brother. I... I just... I'm strong. Yeah. Strong, 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 strong! And, and yet... <laughs> as soon as our killing game began, he realized, no matter how tough he pretended to be, he was just another weakling that could die in an instant. <laughs> and then the lovely and the hateful Monokuma announced the revealing of the embarrassing secrets. At that point, it was clear I would have no problem shedding light on his secret. Mondo killed his own older brother. No, no matter what, I couldn't let the other gang members find out. If that happened, everything would have been ruined. Everything me and my brother had worked to create would have been destroyed. His death, all the guilt I'd be carrying around, it would have been for nothing. So that's why... I... That's why I... I... I Mondo. Yeah. After I saw what Monokuma had on me, my head filled up with a kind of fuzzy uneasiness. It just started swirling around. I never felt anything like it before. I, I... I just... I didn't know what to do about it. Wasn't sure what to think or say. But after a while, that fuzzy uneasiness... <laughs> turned itself into a rock-hard lump of anxiety, way down in my stomach. It was right around then that Chihiro asked me to start working out with him. Right there, I... He told me a secret. <laughs> Seriously? Jesus. Uh, I'm sorry. Yeah. Uh, I'm sorry I lied to you. <laughs> Why? Why now? Why are you telling me this all of a sudden? Huh? Huh? Because, I mean, you've kept that secret all this time, right? If anyone found out, you would... But... You, you're right, but... I want to change. I wrap myself in lies. I'm weak. I want to destroy that version of me forever. His words were like a knife in my gut. I felt like he was exposing the lie I've been living myself. I have to change. I don't want to be weak anymore. You're so strong. It can't hurt you, right? Whatever secret Monica might tell us. You piece of... So what? You're saying I should just say it? What? You're saying if what? I really am, I should just be able to tell everyone my secret? Huh? Huh? I was jealous. I was jealous of Jihiro's strength. He had the strength to face his own weakness. To try and overcome it. It was the kind of strength I'd never had. So I was jealous of him. And that jealousy broke me. What? Are you making fun what? of me? I'm strong! Are you fucking with me right now? No! I I'm not making fun of you. You really are strong, Mondo. I felt like I could hear something start to creak. Something inside my head. <laughs> what did he want me to do? What was I supposed to do? What was I supposed to just sit back? Let my secret get revealed and ruin everything? W what's wrong? What's wrong? Damn you! Why'd you have to tell me all that? Are you trying to rub my feeling in my face? I... I just no. wanted to... I just really admire you. I admire your strength. Yeah, that's right. That's right. I am strong. Strong. I'm strong. Yeah. Strong, 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 strong. Stronger than you. You son of a bitch. I'm stronger than Daya. I remember anything after that. When I woke up again, he was laying at my feet covered in blood. I had the dumbbell in my head. I was just staring at him, down on the ground. <laughs> hey! I... killed him. I killed Chihiro. Even after all this time, 
I'm still just as weak as I've always been. And thanks to that, I did something I can never take back. Mondo, who is normally so aggressive, so angry, he hid that weak side away from everyone. That was his secret. Weakness like that lived in a heart like his, and it turned to a cold-blooded. God damn it! <laughs> Look at him, you see? You're all just like him. For a secret from the past, for a memory. <laughs> for that, he killed another living human in cold blood. Hmm. He couldn't cut free of his regrets from the outside world. He just doesn't know what a true strength is. <laughs> Do you see hope anywhere in there? Because I sure don't. <laughs> you bastard! <laughs> just shut up, you son of a bitch! Go ahead, say that again, I dare you! Yep. Okay, I'll say it as many times as I want. It's what I want to say, but... <laughs> Unfortunately, I can't do that right now, because the time for punishing is fast approaching! P punishing You kid me! You mean... Execution! Well now, well That's now, That's what well I promised you, right? Well now. The black of that disturbs the peace will be punished! Ridiculous! Hold on! Now then, I prepared a very special punishment! For Mondo Iwana, the ultimate biker gang leader! No, no wait! Wait! Let's give it everything we've got! It's, it's punishment time! time! I said wait! Sorry, man. I couldn't keep the promise we made. From one man to another. Uh-oh. Time for Mondo to go bye-bye. Shit hair. And Monokuma's got the shit hair. The Cage of Death. Interesting how I was able to like still maintain that even without him pulling it or driving it. <coughs> Damn, that Monaco is tired. Yo, where's Mondo? Mondo butter. Oh, he got liquefied. <laughs> Laugh at death and your soul will forever be at peace. <coughs> it can't be. My brother. Another murder and another execution. I want to feel again. Everyone's lives are taken so lightly here. I feel like I might be going mad. Maybe I'll just let it happen. <laughs> Big ol' Ross! Asaka's sad screams invaded our skulls. We were each forced to realize once again. But he, of course, he had to. <laughs> what a disappointment. This is the end of the game. But get you kick off? What is this? You're completely insane, you know that? A game? One of our friends is dead. Do you realize that? Naturally. Of course I do. Because this game is life or death. Hey. I don't have anything to say to you. I don't have a response, except that... However... I just don't understand why. Why did you go out of your way to disguise Mondo's crime? What? Why? <laughs> Isn't it obvious? Because the things made things more interesting. His voice is calm, emotionless. Like the voice of death. It showed me to the bone. <laughs> Last night, when the murder took place, I was in the library as usual. Honestly. So I ignored nighttime rule too. Hmm. <laughs> that rule never mattered to me. I don't recall agreeing to it. There is nothing to be done. Well, I don't particularly care. Please continue. <laughs> the night grew late, and I decided to return to my room. Which is when I stumbled upon him. 
I spotted Mono coming out of the girls' locker room. After he'd gone, I looked inside and saw the corpse. What? 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 You mean to actually witness the murder? <laughs> he was such a fool. He didn't have the slightest idea that I'd seen it. Well... Yo, you're saying you knew the culprit was from the very beginning? That's right. Indeed. But if that had been the end of it, how boring would that have been? I mean, what a waste of time to have the answer revealed right at the beginning. <laughs> Which is why I decided to lend a little helping hand. I thought I would liven things up. You did all that to liven things up? I see. So, after hearing about Genocide Jack from Toko, you decided to use that to create the fake murder scene? But... But damn, man! If we had to figure out who really done it, you would have been dead too, right? <laughs> well, obviously, I would have revealed the truth before it reached that point. <laughs> of course. Yakio turned to look at me in the eye. I could feel his sharp eyes piercing into me. <laughs> Thanks to a certain remarkable someone, it never did, and I was able to perform an interesting experiment. <laughs> interesting. Once I do decide to become blackened, I now know who I'll have to watch out for. What? Correct. So that was your reason. <laughs> Are you satisfied? Indeed. Yes, we're done listening to your story. Moving on. Hey. There's something I'd like to ask Monokuma. What's this? Oh, I'm up next. You. You like to perform these elaborate executions each time, correct? My question is, why? <laughs> <laughs> Do you like them? But you know, this punishment, this despair, it's not just for you. <laughs> all this punishment, all this despair is my gift to mankind itself. What? You're over-exaggerating. <laughs> I am not over-exaggerating. These punishments are meant to transport all hope to despair. Damn. What do you mean? Huh? Me? Me? <laughs> Me? What the heck? Meat, 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 Good grief. I don't understand why you have to pick apart every little stupid thing. <laughs> Whatever. It doesn't matter. In the end, I'm going to stand alone as the victor. And then everything will be revealed to me. Ooh, ah, the exciting. noble son of a noble family. Truly, you understand me. <laughs> I think this is the start of a terrifying friendship. That's enough. Shut up. I would never stoop to the level of a childish criminal like you. Let me just say this. After I have achieved complete victory, you're up next. Hmm. I'm going to find you and kill you. Understand? In the name of my family. In the name of the Tagami family, for which victory is a foregone conclusion. You're getting all riled up! Ooh, so cool! It's like you're the main character of a video game or something. No trash mob for you! I swear, whatever it takes, I will kill you. <laughs> <laughs> temper, temper! Sounds like someone needs a nap. <laughs> <laughs> Monokuma's laughter peeled across the courtroom. The curtain closed on the case of Chihiro and Mondo. And I knew that wasn't the end. The killing game would still continue. Because the mastermind wouldn't let it end. For those of us who were still alive, our worst fear and despair kept on multiplying. It was the kind of despair that felt like a blind puppy in hell had more of a future than us. All of our courage, our effort, our friendship, it felt like it amounted to nothing at all. It was the worst kind of despair. Well, anyway, like I was saying, this is a pretty good spot. Yeah, a really good spot. What are you talking to, anyway, Monica? Anyway, isn't it amazing how that girl went and killed someone before things even had a chance to get boring? Huh? Once things really get moving, it'll be like a roller coaster. What there won't girl? be any stopping it. Fear and despair charge forward at a speed nothing can hope to match. But I must admit, I'm disappointed. I went to all the pain and effort of making you part of the group, and you couldn't play your part. You do remember you were supposed to make the first move, right? Well, no biggie. Nothing we can do about it now. So just do your best to make things more exciting from now on, okay? After all, that's what everyone wants to see. One thing I'd like to ask. As long as you don't want to know my measurements, Fire away! What's the size of your beard, dick? Who is it? 
the 16 high school student men. My, my, you really took me by surprise there. I know I said you could ask anything, but super denied, ultra denied, demonic denied. Because you see, that's my ace in the hole. And nobody be dumb enough to reveal that, right? No matter how close they were to their friends. <laughs> Chapter 2, Boy's Life of Despair. Ten students remain. To be continued. Crazy Daimo. So, yeah, this is all the time we have for today's episode. Thank you all so much for following along. If you missed any of the action, it'll be on my YouTube channel later, The Otter Samurai. Uh, also, I'd like to side note, if you see my episodes on my Twitch channel, uh, they're kind of like out of order and they're misnamed. I'm trying to edit those, but for some reason I can't edit them on my phone. So it's kind of getting a little wild. Just know that the episodes are going in normally, and they are being edited to my YouTube channel. Like They're being fixed up so they're proper. But uh, everything's going in order, and it's all working out. It's just... For some reason, I can't edit them before I export them. <laughs> but if you missed the videos, they'll be up on my YouTube channel later. Hit like, subscribe, and I'll catch you on the next episode. See ya!